minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Veos, and welcome to another episode. Before we get started, do you remember a long time ago when I tried to get a non-airhogging SSTO to the moon and back? Well, I actually solved that problem, but unfortunately the craft that I built would have barely enough fuel to make it back to Kerbin, if at all. It was extremely hard to fly up there and very user unfriendly. So I decided to just kind of leave it in the corner and collect digital dust, maybe one day show it off. Uh, I don't know. But anyway, a gentleman that goes by the name of Raw introduced me to one of his videos. It's a non-airhogging SSTO that goes to the moon and back. And unlike my SSTO, his has a substantial amount of fuel left over. This is due to the fact that his craft is very lightweight and has the minimum amount of parts needed to get to the moon and back. Not only that, but his techniques to get to the moon and back are also fuel savers. So I must give credit where credit is due. Awesome job, Ra. Keep up the good work. The link to Ra's video will be at the end credits. I highly suggest that you click on it and check it out. In today's quick file episode, I will be introducing to you the Star Heron. Hope I'm saying that right. It is a 12 to 15 ton payload non-airhogging SSTO. One of three non-airhogging SSTOs that I've been working on for the past couple of weeks. Pretty much whatever you can fit into that space you can bring into orbit, up to about 15 tons or more. It has plenty of fuel, it has also plenty of RCS fuel, just in case you want to travel around, dock with space stations, or even get the perfect orbit, whatever that orbit may be. It also comes with an escape pod system, capable of not only parachuting down to the planet, but also deorbiting itself or docking with a nearby space station. Well, not docking, more like rendezvous, but you get the point. Now, coincidentally, this thing can also make a pretty good bomber. It can also make a pretty good cargo ship as well, as it can be modified with a type of pod with parachutes that can drop off supplies and troops anywhere around the world. To fly it, simply hit the space bar. Your number two key controls your aerospike rockets. Your number one key controls your jet engines and your air intakes. Number five controls your forward ladders and the zero key controls your antennas and communication dishes. Now when you get up to some speed, pull up at a 45 degree angle until you reach 12,000 meters. This is because it is very heavy and if you pull straight up to try to cut through the thicker atmosphere, your craft will slow down monumentally due to the fact that it's so heavy and you'll end up wasting fuel. Now at about 12 to 14,000 meters, you want to go ahead and level out to about 15 degrees and try to build up as much speed as possible while gaining altitude slowly. Once you reach about 25,000 meters, you want to try to stay at that altitude and get as much speed as you possibly can. Once you drop down to about 0.25 air intake, you want to go ahead and pull back on the throttle to keep from flaming out. Now when you reach to about 1300 meters per second, you want to pitch up at about 45 degrees. As you start losing air intake, pull back on the throttle to try to maintain the jet engines as long as possible. Try to keep your speed at above 1200 meters per second. At 30,000 meters, Go ahead and turn on your aerospike rockets. Now remember, there are a lot of reaction wheels inside the body of this craft. 
you can go ahead and squeeze as much power as you can from these jet engines to about 35,000 meters before having to turn them off completely. Once you've gotten to your desired suborbital altitude, go ahead, turn off the engines, glide up to your apoapsis, and begin your orbital insertion burn. Now that you're at your stable orbit, go ahead and hit the zero key to unravel the antennas and communication dishes. Now it's time to release your cargo. Go ahead and make sure your RCS is on, tap the spacebar to release, and hit the I or K keys to float away from the cargo. Now it's time to come back home. Empty out the fuel from the middle tanks into the forward tanks. This will help to bring the weight to the front of the craft to increase stability during re-entry. Well, there she is, ladies and gentlemen, the 12 to 15 ton payload Star Heron class SSTO. Now, I'm sure this craft can be upgraded and fine tuned, but as I said before, I don't have a whole lot of time during the days. So, crafts like this usually take anywhere between a couple of days to a couple of weeks to build. So, once I finally get the craft to work, then I try to make a video of it, which also takes a long time because of the fact that I don't have a whole lot of time during the day. Needless to say, I'm still waiting to hit the numbers on the lottery. 
So before I end this video, let me give you a sneak peek of the next SSTO that I'm going to be putting out in the next Quick Files video. And here it is, the 25 to 30 ton payload SSTO Star Crane. And then after that will be the 50 ton. And then of course the 100 ton, hopefully. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed. I am Veos, signing off. Also, try to keep your altitude at, at about a gentleman by the name of Ram. Fuck. It is one of three types of different SSTOs that I've been working on for the past couple of weeks. These SSTOs carry shit. This is due to the fact that his craft is very lightweight and has the minimum apart part apartments. Geez. Today, before we begin this episode, I'm going to go over something real quick. It also comes with an escape pod for your space kerbal. Space kerbal, shit.